In this tutorial, you're going to learn how to use the Slick Slider, or otherwise known as Slick.js, to easily add a carousel to any website that you might be working on. Hi, this is James from Junior Developer Central, and welcome to this tutorial where we're going to be building a, a carousel using Slick.js. If you have a second before we get started, don't forget to subscribe to support the channel and for future video updates and tutorials. So we're going to be creating a project a little bit like this. Um, we're going to be using an existing template that I have for other projects, but we're just going to add a, a slider with some food pictures uh, as sort of menu options at the bottom of the page. And hopefully you can see some of the benefits of Slick straight away. Um, it's automatically sliding our images for us. Uh, we've also got menu options at the bottom here where we can just click these dots to slide between different images. And you can actually click and drag across as well. Um, you may not have noticed, but the slider actually pauses as you hover. Um, so there really are a lot of flexible options that you can configure. And it's simply a case of passing in extra values when you create a tiny bit of JavaScript. Okay, so let's dive in and start uh, with a fresh template. I'll provide you with the starter template in the description below. So if you want to start with that on CodePen, feel free. Uh, or if you want to code along in your own text editor, that's fine too. Uh, I'll talk you through the different steps in order to get Slick set up in any project that you might be working on. Okay, so here we are in our starter template. And as you can see, it's just a, a hero image and there's no carousel at the bottom. We need to add all of that in to get Slick to work. But this is just a good template to use so that you've got a bit of context of how your slider might look uh, when working on a real project. So in order to get our carousel to work, we need to get all of the dependencies to get Slick to run. We need to create a little bit of markup and load in some images. And then finally, just initialize it with JavaScript and pass in the different options that we want to use with our Slick instance. So we'll go through those three parts in this tutorial and we'll kick off by just getting the dependencies installed onto the project. Now, because I'm using CodePen here, I can just import them all in through the CodePen configuration. But if you're doing this in your own project or in your text editor, uh, you can just import all of these into the head and body of your HTML document. And you'll see what I mean in just a second. So if you go over to the Slick website, uh, you'll see that it does give you instructions about uh, downloading the CSS and JavaScript that's used to make Slick run. And you can do that. You can download it. And if you've got a build process perhaps in your project, you can import those files and make sure they get minified and or whatever's happening in your particular build process. And the other thing is we need jQuery as well for this to run. Uh, but what I'm going to do for this project, and I think it's quite useful to do, is to just pull in the files from a CDN. Uh, so there are lots of uh, CDNs available. Um, CDN.js was the first one that came up when I googled this, so, so that's probably the best option to go for for this example. And we need to load in two files for CSS. Uh, first of all, we need to load in the actual base slick CSS file. So I'll just copy that URL there. And in CodePen, what I can do is if I go to the cog here next to CSS, uh, I can actually load in additional CSS files from here. So I just literally put that URL into there. And there's also another one that we need to pull in from the CDN as well, which is the theme. So obviously you can get different themes to uh, style how your slick slider works, but the basic one is pretty good. So we'll add that into our CSS as well there in CodePen and we'll save that. And as I mentioned before, there's also some JavaScript to load in. So we need to load in this slick.min.js. So if I just copy that and back in CodePen, we can go to our JS cog. And same sort of thing as CSS, we can specify that uh, file to be loaded here as well. But just before we do that, I'm going to load in jQuery as well. So we can uh, just search for that here. And you can see that's loaded. Before we load in Slick. And that's quite important actually because Slick depends on jQuery. You need to make sure that if you're doing this on your own project, that you load jQuery first. Otherwise, Slick will fail to run. Okay, so with those dependencies in there, we've got all we need really to get Slick up and running. So let's create some markup and add some images. So right at the bottom of our section here, this is where the page ends at the moment. Uh, I'm just going to add in another section and I'll give it an ID of slideshow. And the first thing I'm going to do is put a heading level two in there and just call it our menu. And we can see that just appearing down there below. And just after our H2 element, I'll create another div and give it a class of Slick. And this is what we'll be using in our JavaScript to target where we want Slick to run. So Slick is going to basically run inside this div. And the way Slick works is we just put in some div elements in there. And you can put any content you like in there. It doesn't have to be an image. It can be something else. So let me create three divs there just so that we've got something to see in Slick when it loads. 
So that's all the markup that we really need to get Slick to work. And to, but to actually get the carousel to spin, uh, we need to uh, open up JavaScript and actually initialize Slick from there. So before we start loading in any images, let's actually uh, initialize Slick so to see it working. So the way we do this is with jQuery and we say documents are ready. So when the page is actually loaded, we pass in a function and this is what happens when the uh, page is ready to do some work. Uh, and then we just target that slideshow that we created earlier and we use that with our jQuery selector and we'll say slideshow. And inside there is the div that has the class of slick. So we want to reference that specifically. And all you say is slick. Oh, I just realized that I gave that an ID of slideshow, not a class of slideshow. So we need to make sure that that's a, a hashtag there. Okay, so now when the page loads, if we scroll to the bottom of the page, uh, you can see there's our first div there with content of one. And if we click and drag, you can see we can slide between content two, content three, and back again as well. So that's the absolute bare bones to get Slick working. Uh, you just literally create a div element uh, with some kind of identifier and then call the Slick function on it once the document's loaded. But of course, the slideshow with some text in there isn't very interesting. We want to load in some images and then get them to slide through. And once we've done that, we'll take a look at some of the more advanced options and configurations that you can do with Slick. So back in our markup, I'm just going to remove all this text here inside the divs. And I'm just going to go over to a stock photography website like uh, Pexels, for example. And our template's all about food, so let's uh, do a search for food in there. And we've got these kind of burrito um, tacos, apparently. So let's uh, copy that image location. And it's probably worth saying that this isn't the best way of actually getting your images. You should obviously download them and incorporate them into your projects, or at least upload them to your own hosting provider. But just for this tutorial, it's nice and quick and easy to just grab these images from here. And so in the first div, I'll put an image here of our tacos. And let's also get some pancakes as well. And we'll get one more. And let's go for the spinach and chicken pomegranate salad. Okay, so now if we scroll down to our page, you can see that the images are being loaded, but there's a problem. Uh, you can actually scroll through them, um, but they're massive, <laughs> yeah, even for this small page. So we need to make sure that the images don't overflow the container that we've created. Uh, so in our CSS, we'll target our slideshow element. And let's say for every div that's in there, We'll make sure the uh, width doesn't go above 100%. And for every image in there as well, we'll make sure the width is 100% too. And just for clarity, we'll set the height to auto as well. Okay, so let's have a look at the page again now. So that's looking a bit nice. We can see our pancakes. And if we scroll across, we can see our salad and also our tacos. So there we have our slider complete with images. Um, let's have a look now at some of the configuration options that you can pass to Slick.js in order to make a more customized carousel for you. Okay, so when you create your Slick instance here by calling .slick on the element, uh, you can actually pass in an object there uh, where each key is a configuration option and the value is what you want to set it as. So for example, uh, if we wanted to make sure that the carousel plays automatically, we can put the autoplay property to true. And now if we scroll to the bottom of the page, you can see that the slides go on their own. They automatically uh, flip from one to the next. Uh, and that's really handy um, because that's probably what you want for your carousel. Um, maybe you want to control the speed of that uh, autoplay as well. So if we put in another property of autoplay speed and set that to say two seconds, now when the page loads and the, and the slider runs, the uh, images change every two seconds. So you can change that to be as fast or as slow as you like. And there's another configuration option which is really handy as well, which is to uh, supply the dots uh, at the bottom of the page, which I showed you on the initial example. And that's simply a property that's just called dots. So if we set that to true. Now if we scroll to the bottom of our slick slider, you can see we've got those three dots that we can flip between uh, each image as we need to. Another thing you might want to control is the transition speed, so the transition from one slide to another. 
Uh, so let's make it super long just so you can see that the effect that that has. Uh, by the way, these uh, values are in milliseconds, so 2,000 would be 2 seconds, and 4,000 is obviously 4 seconds. And now you can see that transition going across, and it's really slow. But you might want that for some kind of effect uh, when slowly showing images in your carousel. So you might have noticed a problem as well with what we've got set up at the minute, and we've just basically taken in some random images, so it's to be expected that they're all different heights. And when the slider goes across, you can see that we, it doesn't look that great because we're actually getting uh, the different height of images through. Um, so there's not much you can do about that with Slick itself. Uh, it just literally throws out whatever images you put in there. Um, it, it does have an option for adaptive height, so the slider will kind of adjust to whatever the size is of the image. But if this is going on your main homepage or something, you probably want to have all of the images to have a fixed height. So you can do that from the source. Just go to the images, make sure they're all the same height. Um, but for this example, I can just go back to our CSS here and make sure that the containing element has got uh, a specific height set. So in our slideshow, I'll just set the height element of each of these divs to a specific value, and probably something like 300 pixels would be okay for this example. Uh, so if I just set that now, uh, when the page reloads, you can see that all of the images are coming out at the same size, and we've got a nice fixed width carousel slider. Uh, obviously you might need to play around with the images themselves to make sure they fit into the slider as you see fit. Uh, and one other option that you can do with the uh, slide options here for Slick, um, there's a nice option called Fade, and if we just say Fade is equal to true, when the page reloads and we go down to the slider, as the name suggests for the property, Instead of sliding those uh, images across, obviously they fade, cross fade in between each of them. And it's quite a nice effect. Uh, and that's what you'll see on a lot of home pages when they're displaying recent work or services that they have to offer. So that is everything probably that you need to know about Slick. Uh, as you can see, we've got our own custom carousel set up and we can change a lot of the options to make it suit our purposes. There are a lot of other configuration options that you can find on the Slick.js website. So head on over there if you want to learn about all of those. Just before you go, don't forget to subscribe to support the channel and for future video tutorials and updates. And I'll see you next time.